Hi guys, Brian Lebo from Lebo Guide Service. It's spring here in upstate New York, and like many of you, I am busy getting my boat ready to get out on the water on opening day, opening walleye, opening pike, opening tiger muskie. I'm really excited. I got a couple of new things this year uh, for the boat. I got a new bottom mounted trolling motor, I mean, Koto Altera. I already got out there and tried it out. It was amazing. Um, and I got a Minn Kota Talon. So there's a lot of wiring going on here. The other thing that I did this year was I ended up completely rewiring uh, the boat for my marine electronics. Um, there's a, if you, if you own a tracker boat, it comes basically with a kind of a stock electrical system. Um, I believe they run either 14 or 16 gauge wire. I didn't really pay attention to it. Um, there's open butt connectors on the front end of the boat, and there's also open butt connectors on the back of the boat, specifically for rigging electronics. I have a few more pieces of electronics than your average bear. Um, I've got a, a bow mounted and, 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 a, and a rear mounted um, fish finder. I have a ethernet system on the boat, a Minn Kota, ethernet, a Minn Kota Hummingbird ethernet system. I've got um, a number of other accessories that, you know, require power, essentially. So, you know, 14 or 16 gauge wire is not going to cut it. And here's how I found out why. Um, little disclaimer, I'm not a marine electron, I'm not a, like a marine electrician. I'm no expert in this. Uh, but I did some research and I ended up completely rewiring my boat based on uh, a problem I had with my rear fish finder. Um, so last season, before I left for a deployment, uh, I wanted to get on the water, right? Well, I had kind of been noticing that sometimes when I start my motor, it shuts my rear fish finder off. It's annoying, right? Well, I did some research and I found out that that is called voltage drop. Uh, and voltage drop, and again, I'm not an expert on this, so I'll try and like surmise what voltage drop is. Um, it's, it's all based on, if, if you're running switches on your boat, uh, that creates resistance. It, what else creates resistance is the diameter of the wire and the distance that that wire is running. So running off the main power switch, I have a wire, a wiring harness that goes from the battery to the main power switch, and then everything gets distributed out from there. I believe that's where my problem was. And I believe I was correct because I took it out in the water and everything worked perfectly. On the Hummingbird units, you can actually look and it'll tell you how many volts that that unit is getting. I ended up buying marine grade 12 gauge wire. I bought a, a roll, it was like 30 bucks. I bought a red roll and a black roll. Um, I also ended up getting a C Systems fuse box. And I'll show you the fuse box here in a little bit. Basically, you could hook up 10 different accessories to this thing. Um, you, you wire in um, power to the box, and then the, the box distributes, wire, uh, distributes power out from there. Um, so I have, potentially, I could be running two downriggers, a Minn Kota Talon, two fish finders, a um, Ethernet system, and some other things kind of off of this one battery. And it should be able to work. I have a 27 size series battery, it's big enough. So I'm gonna show you exactly what I did. So this right here, guys, is essentially what I did. So I have eight gauge wire running from the battery to a uh, marine grade breaker switch, a 60 amp breaker, and then that runs back to this fuse box here. And then each one of these fuses is running on the positive end and then the negative end is all wired back into here and then the negative lead back to the battery is just run direct back to the battery so i looked in the user manuals for everything i have hooked up on the boat and then put in the corresponding um fuse so i have five amp fuses for my fish finders i have a 30 amp fuse for my um uh my Minn Kota talon and then I also have a, I have two uh, downriggers. They're mislabeled right now. I have to fix that. But um, those are running 30 amp fuses. So guys, here's here's a shot of my Hummingbird unit. 
you'll see down in this corner right here, I'm reading 12.4 volts. Previous to this, I would read like normally like 11.4. So after rewiring this, I'm now reading 12.4 volts. I believe I no longer have the voltage. Here are some of the tools that I use to make my life a little bit easier. Um, one of the things that you definitely need if you're gonna do a project like this is you need a quality set of crimpers, okay? Um, now for cutting and stripping wire, I just, I use the standard one like I bought at Home Depot. This right here is a, it's a, it's a Titan crimper. Um, it does amazing work. Um, it, it's ratcheting. Um, it gets like the perfect crimp on your, you know, your butt connectors and whatnot. The other thing I used that was a huge help, pulling wire, I was able to do it all myself. Um, I just bought a Klein Tools um, snake for pulling wire from the rear part of the boat, from the battery all the way up to the, to the bow um, for my, you know, my bow mounted electronics. And the other necessity that you need is heat shrink connectors. So I bought this pack of heat shrink connectors. I bought another one of butt connectors. And of course I didn't use them all, but I didn't know exactly what sizes I was gonna need. I bought this for like 20 bucks on Amazon. I'm certainly going to use a lot of these, um, but these ones are the insulated heat shrink version. Um, so instead of having to, you know, put individual heat shrink wrap all over everything, I just bought the connectors that had the heat shrink wrap on them, the adhesive heat shrink wrap. And then I used a butane, a small butane torch. You can buy them at Home Depot uh, in order to heat shrink these on. So guys, if you have any questions, feel free to post up in the comments below. Um, sorry, I couldn't show you the whole installation. I was kind of learning at the time. Not really learning. I, you know, I've done speaker jobs in my car. I've done other wiring projects on my boat. But you know, we learn as we go. So if you have any questions, post up in the comments below. If you want to know exactly where I got some of this stuff, you know, certainly ask away. I'm Brian Liebelt from Liebelt Guide Service and Tight Line.